Hey everybody, welcome back to this series on preparing the Curse of Strahd for Shadow Dark RPG. Um, this, I guess, is going to be part five, although it's not going to be exactly prepped for my next session. Um, in the last video I did, it was sort of a side episode, I guess, a side part. Um, and I just went through all the prep I had done up to this point. And one of the things that I had kind of noticed at that point was that my random encounter tables were bad. I just didn't like them. And they don't really fit with what I'm doing this time through. So I thought today, for you know, 15 or 20 minutes or something like that, I would just work on random encounters and making uh, I, I, making them better. I don't even know if I'm going to call them exactly random encounters. I think I might put them in uh, quotation marks a little bit because I think I'm going to prepare them ahead of time. But I want to have like lists of things that um, are, are semi-prepared so that way when the players do travel from Barovia to, say, the Zerpool, camp or from the Zerpool camp to the Laki that I kind of have ideas about what might be happening there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with all this and then kind of move forward from there. Um, so I'm going to delete this uh, bit up there. And uh, now these names, the Savalich Woods, the Barovian Basin, um, Raven Love Moors, the Vallaki Valley, that all relates to, uh, do I still have it? Yeah, it relates to this map, um, which some people have put together. And basically, it's just uh, it's from Dragna Carta, uh, or someone put it together with Dragna Carta's landmarks. Dragna Carta makes maps and encounters, and a whole long thing on, on Reddit if you want to see one of the best breakdowns of Curse of Strahd and, and additions to it, then I would say go there. I've taken a bit from, from Dragna Carta just in the way that I think about Barovia and various possible encounters and locations there. But anyway, as you can see, he divides it up into these sorts of um, places. Uh, and, and this is useful for random encounter tables and things like that. Um, so I might keep this up like over here or something while I do some of this prep um, because it's just useful to have, um, again, a sense of where things are, even though my map is slightly different than this just generally, and I might still keep the same general names for things um, and the different locations. We still haven't played our next session. That's still coming on Monday. We play on Mondays, and so um, they've still just left the church, and I still have the church prepared. I still have Mary's prepared. I know what Gertruda is like. I know um, what Luvash is like, and I know um, what the Zerpool camp is like. So the immediate stuff that they are probably going to encounter is already prepared so for the next session, maybe the next two sessions. I don't really think I need to worry too much about that. But I think this stuff is useful long term. I'm going to delete the different kinds of encounters because I, I don't think it fits super well with um, these ideas. Let me see if I can remove the numbering. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to, or maybe I'll just number them all. Yeah, well, I'll figure it out. Um, I'll remove the numbering for now. Uh, and then we'll see if it, uh, if it needs to come back. So I'm going to delete that and then think about this stuff and see what I want to do here. So what I might do, um, so D4 plus 1, Barovian Commoner searching for a missing person. That is just straight out of the, the book, basically. Um, although it doesn't say they're looking for a missing person in the book, it says they could be looking for a safer place to live or an angry mob if they're searching for the characters or heading toward Castle Ravenloft. Now, um, in this case, because the village of Barovia has been basically devastated um, and there aren't that many people left, I think D4 plus 1 Barovian commoners searching for a missing person would make a lot of sense, right? Someone ran off. They're trying to find them before they leave. So um, I'll do something like, yeah, here, maybe, I'll, maybe I will do numbering. Oops. One, but we'll move this over there. And then I'll, I'll come back to that later. D4 traveling to Stani is also a pretty cool thing I could do. Um, I actually like that idea. A hunter tracking an elk, it doesn't make a lot of sense, especially by Barovia. A lonely werewolf hermit who can offer help or guidance also know. A babbling ghost seeking a way home. A ruined house in the woods. I, I don't think that makes sense, let, sense either. I don't want the spirit supernatural to be like that. Um, if there is a ghost, 
then it's going to be one character who sees it, and it's going to be like, you know, a sense or something like that. So I might leak that because uh, the one character who can see into the spirit realm is Varya, and uh, and so I might do something like that during a rest, but I might come up with like lists of of this person has this kind of encounter that happens to them. Anyway, so prayer of Barovians offering a sacrifice to the Lady of the Woods. Now this one I like. Uh, I mentioned that in the other video. I do like this one. A pair of Barovians offering a sacrifice to the Lady of the Woods. So what could be happening is a couple of them have wandered off from the village and are trying to appease the forest. They're trying to turn to the Lady of the Night. And uh, that I actually, I actually kind of like. So I think I'm going to keep that one. A D6 plus one hungry wolf seems good. Uh, the swarms of bats I don't know about. Uh, the giant boar being attacked by twig blights. I haven't introduced blights at all. Uh, again, no unmarked graves, no, no giant spiders, uh, no mad druid, um, no, no. A ghost of fog that blinks hallucinations and illusions. I might keep that. I don't think I'm going to keep the swarms of bats. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but I might do this one. Ghost of fog that brings hallucinations and illusions. A carved figure made and tucked into the hollow of a tree. Um, I might leave a second kind of thing, like encounters or places. So a swarm of ravens watching curiously. Um, yeah. Uh, I know the Bartikovs are here, and I haven't yet introduced ravens. An unseen rider endlessly running through the woods. No. A crumbling chapel linked with that kind of ghost, an old and excavated crypt. Oh, again, also no. So, um, I'm just going to delete that one then. So, what this means is these are the six possible encounters they could have in the Svalich Woods um, during the day. So, I think that's what I'll do here. Whoops. I'll say day encounters. Go. Yeah, here we go. Day encounters. I'll center that. There we go. And I'll delete this NPC encounters thing. All right, so Svalich Woods, day encounters. And then um, we'll do night encounters. Now, I don't think they're going to be traveling very much during the night, but they might. Um, yeah, the Barovian Basin, I don't think. So, so the Spalish Woods is just basically any woods encounter, so I might just say woods. And counters. But again, see, I'm kind of thinking about this in like old style D, D games and i don't think that's how this is going to go um instead like i do like this, so i really like random encounters i think that there's actually a good reason for them uh it keeps you as a dm on your uh, on your toes it adds that element of randomness which is really i think helpful for a D, &D game and it also just keeps the game more interesting for me i don't know what's coming i don't know necessarily what to expect so um, I think it's, I like random encounters. So I like keeping an element of randomness in what they're encountering, but, um, and, and I also like the idea that a random encounter can change the whole game. Like it really can, it can, it can throw everything off and change what you expected and what you had planned and all that. So, um, but maybe that's all I need. Maybe I just need something like this. It's a D6 table, a really simple one, and when something happens on it, I cross it off and move on because they're not going to encounter that many things. Maybe I'll just do a simple, like, 50-50. They have a 50% chance of having a random encounter, and then I roll a D6. So that, uh, and, and they're limited to one random encounter per, like, session of travel or per, yeah, because what I don't want is to have this, like, slowing down. Um, so random encounters... And then set piece encounters, and I think that's what I'll want to do. So random encounters, and then set encounters. Um, I'm going to delete this day and night thing. So what I'll what I'll do? Oops, what I'll do is random encounters, and then set encounters. Yeah, see, this is what I think I, I would rather do. Have this idea of set encounters, so that there are things that are going to happen, and maybe it's only one or two. The players pass. A ruined chapel um, overgrown and untended. So that's one thing, and I don't know exactly where that'll be, but that's something that, that, that will happen to them. Right? So the players pass. And then if I need to, um, 
I can roll on the random encounter chart if there's something there. I'll come back to that idea though. So okay, that's one. Um, the players pass characters. Pass. Crow's nest, like, uh, that's an, one of those like cages, crow's cage, whatever they call it, crow's cage. Long unused. So those are two set encounters. So I could put those somewhere on the map, essentially, and then they're there. Um, And then what is something that I kind of want them to have on the road um, as they're traveling from place to place? So it's a little bit like uh, Maud, right? I knew that they were going to travel. I mean, I knew that they were going to be in the city, and I wanted them to see Maud. That was sort of a random encounter. It would have been a random encounter in a normal game, but I knew ahead of time I wanted it to happen, and so I just waited for an opportune moment and put it in. Um, when they're traveling, I can do something like that. Um, Yeah. Problem is, I don't have any good ideas. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get a little inspiration here. I'm going to go through my rule sets. Uh, let's see, we got a whole bunch of things here. Shadow Dark. And we're going to open up the Premium Shadow Dark book. And we're going to go to their random encounter table. And we're going to see what they give us. Random encounter tables. Here we go. So Arctic, no. Artisan district, no. Castle district, no. Cave. Um, maybe caves. Deep tunnels, deserts, forests. Let's try a forest encounter right now. Just to see what we get. All right. So the first one is a 41. Six giant spiders. Okay. Again, I don't want giant spiders. Um, 75. What do we get there? Krugan the troll drags D4 injured tied up rival crawlers. Okay. So I don't want trolls either, but this is an interesting one, right? So maybe Krugan, I like the name Krugan, I'm gonna keep that. Krugan the Bounty Hunter, right? Krugan the Bounty Hunter drags an outlaw, uh, drags a Vistani behind him. Drags of Istana behind him. He is wanted in Falaki. Right, so this would be a good one, right? So Krugan the Bounty Hunter, I might actually, so this is a good one. Cut that out of here, add that in here. But that's much more interesting. Krugan the Bounty Hunter drags of Istana behind him. He is wanted in Falaki. Um, Poor soul is wanted in Balaki. For theft. Okay. So that's something, right? Right there we have a, a much more interesting encounter. Krugan the Bounty Hunter drags of Astana behind him. Yeah, maybe I'll just get rid of this idea. See, I'm working on this as I'm going. Maybe I'll do like a D... I'll just do a D6. Um, and I'll roll a couple more times, and if anything more interesting comes up, then I'll... Then I'll Swap out one of these. 33, a wheeled hag is forging with her two truffle hunting boars. Okay. Okay. Um, that's sort of like this, though. The pair of Barovians offering sacrifice to the Lady of the Woods. In that, both would be... If I, they run into a hag, I mean, that's a hag. But this one is a foreshadowing thing. And it gives them an indication of what might be coming. Um... But there are hags and witches in the woods. So I actually keep this one. I'm going to keep this one. Um, I'm going to detail each of these. So basically what I'm going to, I'm just going to do what the book basically does and give like a headline and a roar. And then I'll give like a little bit more of a detailed description below. So Krugan the Bounty Hunter drags the stuff behind him. Let me roll a couple more and see if I get anything better. Uh, 13. 
An ancient rotted tree snaps and falls towards the PCs. Hmm. An ancient rotted tree snaps and falls towards the PCs. I like that. I like that. What do I like that better than? I like that better than the traveling Vistani. Um, an ancient rotted tree snaps and falls towards the PCs. Yeah. I like that because it's also like, did someone cause it? Was it an accident? How did that happen? So we have hungry wolves, we have the ghostly fog, we have Paraborovians offering sacrifice, we have this ancient rotted tree, we have commoners and they have Frugan. All right, so I like that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go commoners and I'm gonna come up with something for them, right? So we're gonna go back to here. And we're gonna do a name generator, um, right? Let's do uh, random characters. Oh, there we go. Character names. All right, let's just roll a d20 and a d6, and that'll give us a name, right? Yeah, 20 and d6. So three, one. So we're looking at Annie. An Agneska. Anika and... 616, Terran. Tarina. Annika and Tarin are terrified and I think these are both women, and they're being called to this hag, which brings up an interesting point that maybe there are certain people who have, who are drawn to the hag. Lady, yeah. Okay, so that's 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 the first one. I'm gonna delete these four. It's just two. Barovian commoners searching for things. So Barovian commoners. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, oh wait, no, 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 this is pair, I jumped right to three, pair, offering, pair of women, offering, so I'll just say, pair, I guess it's not like it's going to be a huge list. I can just put it up here. And I'll just bold it. And so when they go out, one of these things will happen. Maybe two of these things will happen. One of these things will happen. Barovian commoners searching for missing person. D4 plus one. D4. Why don't I just roll it now instead of rolling it then? Why don't I just roll it now? Three. Three Barovian Connors searching for a missing person. Um, what do we have here? We have uh, um, Boris. Um, Savannah. Search for Boris, Savannah, and their daughter, Marta. 
search for their young son who has wandered into the wood. Who's tear? Cave. So a cave, I think I'm gonna put in like an encounter. Like I'll have like a cave they can go to so the players can search for him. Maybe they'll find his tracks and it leads to this cave and in the cave is something. Ooh. Ooh, see this is where I need to draw my, this is where I need to go to my, um, my little bestiary I developed. I just had an idea. If I go down to monstrous beings, I can pick something horrifying like the Strangler. And that's pretty tricky. Two attacks plus two, D6, so it's not gonna kill them horribly, horribly outright, but it's stealthy, it grabs and pulls, and it's this new thing that people have not seen. A gray skewer and gaunt creature with four ropey limbs tipped with clean sucker line claws. That's creepy. Leads to cave and strangler number sixty seven. The boy's dead. The boy is dead. And the boy's dead. Definitely, definitely Falco is dead. Alright, so three poor held in forest, see Savannah and her daughter Monica search for their young son Falca, uh, who has wandered into the wood. Leads to cave. And Strangler 67 boy is dead. So that will be a whole thing if they want to go that way. So if I roll a one on the road or near the road, they'll hear some people calling out. Um, players hear someone near the road or through the woods calling out. Boris. Savannah and their daughter Marta search for their young son Falca, who has wandered into the woods, leads to cave. And let's just say, uh, hard wisdom check leads to cave and strangler number 67 boy is dead. So that's just the thing, right? It'll be a little experience. Um, it'll give them a, a bit of a story, give them some fun, and then they can get this one little reward. Okay, so that's it's day roll of one. Then an ancient rotted tree snaps and falls toward the PCs. Um, dex, mid dex, or take D6 damage. Blue Vosh have a hideout. I know I realize I'm just sitting here quietly typing. Oh, that's not very interesting. I think Blue Vosh has a hideout. Leading to Blue Vosh's hideout. See map. So 
I'm going to come up the map of the little like hut somewhere in the woods that's Lubash's hideout. Um, and that's where he is. He's been staying there. Um, so they could they could find their own way there. Hard wisdom check finds trail, which leads to Lubash's hideout. Okay, a pair of women offering in the woods. We have dreams of Lady Colin in the woods. Uh, this is just creepy and foreshadowing. D6 plus one hungry wolves is D6 plus one hungry wolves. Uh, ghostly fog that brings hallucinations and visions. Have players roll off. Lowest has vision of something they fear. Pavel sees the beast and himself slaying his friend. Uh, Varia sees herself losing the book and being possessed. Arthur sees his brother. The other one's there. Perugin the bounty hunter dragged to the sun, the hunter force was one of the lucky for theft. All right, cool. See, now this is what I'm talking about. This is just a really quick little, um, well, really quick, 26 minutes, but this is a really quick um, way of looking at some of these encounters. I still like doing random encounters, but I don't want it to be a curve. I want it to be one or two things that they could encounter as they're traveling through the woods. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll say um, woods encounter. Two in six each time players. Do I even want to say that? I don't think I want to make a hard and fast rule. I think I'm just going to say that when they go out, if it has nothing's happened, if it's going to be a long travel, I'll roll on this table. And if it's going to be, uh, if they have something else they're doing, then I won't roll. And I'm going to leave these other things here because I'm going to do something like this in the future for the other, the other uh, regions. All right, cool. Well, that's something more or less that I'm going to be doing. I <laughs> hope this has been interesting. Um, again, these videos are kind of funny because I'm, I'm literally just recording myself when I'm preparing, so I don't know if it's terribly helpful, <laughs> but it's uh, interesting for me to go back later and listen to it because I also get um, just sort of an insight into the way I prepare <laughs> and actually see some of the things that I do and some of the mistakes that I make. Anyway, uh, I'll be coming up with another video probably after our next session, so after Monday. Um, see you guys then.